you're attempting today is to do 70 massive freezer meals in one day. And I think we can do it. And I think it's going to be amazing. Well, friends, welcome back. We're gonna do something wild today. I think it's wild. I wasn't planning on wild, but what I've planned is sensibly wild, okay? Sensible, lots of sensibility going on here. Tackling a lot of those big canning projects and many more of those coming up. What I've been wanting to do is also take some time to get some of my classic J. Morel Super Mega Massive freezer cooking days in. And let me tell you, today, I think will be the biggest freezer cooking day I have ever had. Now, there's been some prep, some things have happened, some things have been put in place to help make this happen, and I'll share all those details with you. But what we're attempting today is to do 70 massive freezer meals in one day, and I think we can do it, and I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, let, let's do a time check. Okay, it's 11.55 a.m. I'm gonna officially ring the bell at noon, we're gonna jump into this and do it. And it's all my hopes and dreams, and I think it's really gonna happen. So my plan was yesterday, I was going to do my 30 easy freezer meals in one afternoon, guide pack five. I was gonna get that done yesterday, and today I was gonna do my large family freezer meals guide 17 pack, where we do 40 breakfast freezer meals, and there's a lot of variety in the pack. It's classic casseroles and bakes, but also breakfast cookies and breakfast bars and bagels and all kinds of good things that we're gonna cook up for my large large family of 11. And if you've been following along my updated 2023, how do you do all these things, cook all these things, and film all these things, JMRL filming schedule, is I've been working hard to get the bulk of my filming in on Fridays and Saturdays, so I can focus on my full mama life with all these people who look like me and my husband from Sundays through Thursdays. Yesterday, we still had a busy homeschool morning. I prepped, I'll show you, we got the, the grocery fill-in items. I shopped to my grocery store in my basement, of course, and got a lot of the things and knew a lot of the things that I had, but there were still some holes and some things that I got, which I'll be sharing with you. And so I organized those groceries, got my pans and such together. Whenever big kids wrapped up school and such yesterday and Travis took our three youngest kids, then I had my 12 year old, my 13 year old, and my 16 year old help me with freezer meal prep projects yesterday afternoon and just some general pantry maintenance and such. So what we ended up working on is my 16 year old got all the fruits and all the veggies prepped for both the large family freezer meals breakfast pack 17 and for the 30 easy slow cooker freezer meals in one afternoon pack five. She worked through and got all of those chopped up. They're in pretty bowls and I'll show you those here in a minute. My 12 year old got a bunch of dishes done and he also shredded all of the Swiss cheese that's needed for some of the breakfast meals. And he worked with my 13 year old and I on some basement projects. We got one freezer completely cleaned out. We actually unplugged it for a little bit, wiped it down. It was funky, it needed a deep cleaning, so we got that done. Also, you know, in October, when I was healing from my back sprain, we had a fantastic local pumpkin deal at our John Henry General store where we were able to fill our 15 passenger extended cargo space sprinter van with all the pumpkins it could hold for $40 and we filled the back of my husband's big diesel truck for $40. So we spent $80, we had the whole porch full of pumpkins, it filled our whole front porch and we used that to add to our animal feed for a good eight to 12 weeks. We fed our pigs, our cow, our goats, our sheep, uh, the chickens, the goose, the, you know, every, every single critter that we have here on our little fun hobby homestead benefit from those pumpkins. Now I did save five big Blue Hubbard squash, which you know you can use those just like pumpkin, and lots of folks do. I saved five of those and I saved, I ended up filling four shelves in my basement of various pumpkins of different sizes. Also like my carving pumpkins and things that I had on the porch that I had got for a really good deal. I had those in my basement. And my intent with the four shelves of pumpkin that I had saved was of course now last year with my private member community, we had a whole day where I baked all the pumpkins, pureed all the pumpkins, froze all the pumpkins, and every year I do that with my pumpkins. So this year I thought naturally I would cook up all that pumpkin and I wanted to freeze dry a bunch and can a bunch and you know pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. However, 
Right after things got better with my back, our whole world blew up in December and we've been getting our footing again and here we are in February and those pumpkins were looking at me but they were not happy, okay. And I thought, okay, I've been doing all this canning, I'm doing all this freezer cooking. I did not get to those pumpkins in time. The Blue Hubbard squash looks sad. I mean, they, they were hanging on, they were waiting for me, but somewhere during this time frame, I've, I've lost them, okay. But they're still great for the animals. So my 13 year old helped me. He cleared off all the shelves. He got them all outside. He broke them up. I mean, it's fun. You can just throw a pumpkin against a tree and it breaks up the pumpkin. So with our pigs, with the size of our pigs, they're cooney cooney. We always break up the pumpkin in such form. So all the animals had a massive bonus pumpkin and Hubbard squash feeding day yesterday. Now, you know, all the butternut squash that I had, I made a lot of butternut squash soup for friends, for my family, for some families that had some emergencies and shared those. And I do have some winter squash left that I'm probably going to have a teen today get that chopped up and we'll go ahead and get that in the freeze dryer and I want to use that like how I do the freeze dried yellow squash and peppers and things like that so I'm gonna have them help me work through that and yesterday we got the 10 pounds of bacon that's needed for the breakfast freezer meals cooked up we got 30 sausage patties cooked up also and yes we just had a big spirit horse birthday party uh, it was in the pack I needed to cook up eight and a half pounds or so of ground sausage but we already have all this sausage that we can just a few weeks ago so we brought up several jars of this we won't have to do that and so here on the table are some of the non-perishable items that I picked picked up to add to this freezer cooking. I needed bagels. I needed mini bagels also. These are fun. Also needed some English muffins. Now there are three English muffins missing, but we'll compensate for the ones that are missing. Got my pans ready. Now I do use a lot of glass baking dishes and I have for years and years with my freezer cooking and we will use whatever glass pans I have available, but I like to use these as a backup and it's also helpful in reference to to sharing meals with others. And then I have these little containers. There's a fun breakfast bowl freezer meal that we're gonna do. We're gonna use these four as well. Those are individual meals. Got some more maple syrup and some flour. So, and here's the winter squash that was doing just fine. But like I say, today I'm gonna have a happy helper get those chopped up and we'll get those going through the freeze dryer. We ended up having such a productive afternoon getting several projects done down in the basement plus getting all the prep done for both of these big freezer cooking packs that by six o'clock last night when I sat down for a minute I was like you know what I have a live call in two hours with my membership friends I don't want to cook nothing tonight I'm good I'm good we have leftovers to eat we did all this prep work and I was gentle on myself I was like okay I can either start at six and you know and go late mm -hmm, you know how we do it or choosing to be gentle on myself. I could drink some tea. I got some other filming done for another video that I'm working on for you guys. I had my live call, got in my pajamas, you know, all decent time. So my hopes and dreams plan was that this morning I would be starting to cook those breakfast meals at seven, ha ha, I know it's cute. But I did have a family member, mom life, that I was up with about four or five times last night. So I didn't get up till 8.45 and here we are now. Oh, it's 12.10, we were starting at 12. But this is gonna be so good. Let's get started making our 70 freezer meals in one day. The biggest freezer cooking undertaking I have ever done. One of my top 10 videos is where I did over 100 big family freezer meals during my pregnancy with Benjamin in 2017. But I did those meals over about four to six days. And again, right now with what I'm doing, I'm attempting 70 in one day. Will I do it? We'll have to see. But again, with all that's prepped, I really think, I think we can do this. There's, there's cooking involved, but let's get this mega mama kitchen heated up and jump in and get going so here's the very first massive project we're going to jump into it's breakfast large family freezer meals pack 17 and you can see here all of our recipes and i'll read them to you like a story we're doing a tater tot sausage breakfast casserole i have several tater tot casserole and tater tot breakfast casserole recipes up over on largefamilytable.com uh, we have a hearty breakfast casserole we have a sheet pan bacon eggs and pancake sandwiches 
I love doing sheet pan pancakes. You're gonna love these freezer sandwiches. And then next, it's a blueberry buttermilk pancake casserole. However, I do have some blueberry dissension going on with my folks here. And so, I mean, there's a few that love them and a few that are like, there's blueberries, I'm going to die. So I'm switching them out for strawberries. Everyone loves strawberries. The recipe I use with fresh blueberries. Let's give it a go with the strawberries and see how that works out. We're doing some banana bread breakfast cookies. If they don't go in the freezer, they're already gone. We're doing these easy breakfast casserole bowls and those I'm gonna put in the little containers that I showed you. You're gonna love those. Fantastic for individual grab and go. We're doing peanut butter chocolate chip oatmeal bars. Again, delicious, like those have to get in the freezer today or they're gone. We're doing sausage and apples English muffin strata. We're gonna do a bunch of sausage, egg, and cheese bagels. So helpful to have on hand. And then we're doing egg and cheese pizza bagels. We'll get to those, you'll love them. Now I went through my big batch freezer meal prep guide and this is a bunch of the work that we did yesterday. So this is just good to do the day before or the morning of, the day before is ideal. Doesn't always happen. I mean, sometimes I'm doing this stuff while I'm going along cooking because that's the time I have. But cook and drain 12 and a half pounds of ground sausage. We have that done in the can. Hands. cook and drain 10 pounds of bacon check cook and drain 20 sausage patties I think we did about 30 but if I have extra again already gone uh, cook and dice six pounds of ham I bought the already cubed ham at Walmart prepare 10 cups of baking mix I do have a homemade baking mix recipe or you can use whatever baking mix you have on hand uh, the four onions 12 apples, those are done. Mashed eight ripe bananas, did that. Uh, the yellow peppers, red peppers, green peppers, we did that. Two cups of walnuts, I already have those chopped. So all of that thankfully got done yesterday and right now we're gonna jump into the very first recipe. Oh, and real quick, I went through my shopping list to do all 10 recipes. And again, a lot of this stuff I didn't need, but there were definitely things that I needed. Like 216 eggs, I don't have that many eggs right now. My chickens are just getting going again. But thankfully, egg prices are kind of coming down, I guess, in my area. I mean, it's still ridiculous, but it is what it is, right? So the 60 count box of eggs at my local Walmart just two weeks ago was $32 a box. <gasps> Now it's down to $19.96 a box. So that's definitely, I mean, that makes me feel like it's a savings, even though it's not. I ended up getting four egg boxes. So yes, you might as well say $80 in eggs. That was my largest expense with this pack now because I had a lot of the other proteins. So we'll be doing four nine by 13s of the tater tot sausage breakfast casserole. Let's get going with this, yum. So I do have some glass pans and that's what we're going to use for these first four. Now with this recipe, you can definitely go ahead and bake it and of course let it cool, freeze it for later. I have also done a lot of breakfast casseroles over the years where I don't cook the egg first. I just, I pour the egg in it, I freeze the egg as a liquid and then it bakes the morning that I'm cooking it and need it for breakfast. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is open up my cooked sausage. I'm gonna drain this, and I'm gonna layer the bottom of these casserole dishes with the sausage. Now, if I would have prepped this the day before, I would take that sausage now and layer it on the bottom, or how I've also done it, cook it the day of. Any way it goes, divide the eight and a half pounds of sausage between the four nine by 13 baking dishes. Okay, so now the recipe, again, for doing four pans calls for four cups of shredded cheese. So you know how we like to measure. <laughs> a Jamerol handful is a cup of cheese around the world, right? So I'm just gonna use my hand and spread the cheese around. Next up, we're gonna whisk together 32 eggs, milk and seasoning, some salt, pepper, and some onion powder. And then we will pour that mix over the top of these pans. And then on top of that, we will top with the tater tots. So we won't get out the, the biggest Mega Mama bowls yet, those 30 quart bowls I've had forever, but we will get out the next biggest, which is this lovely bowl right here to do our eggs in. We'll have worked through all the bowls by the end of today, I'm sure. 
do the X now, the gold. You might have seen the picture, you might not, but I had shared a picture on Instagram and Facebook. While I was organizing this refrigerator a little bit and my bowl of my, my farm fresh eggs fell and I lost about a dozen. This is what my 10 year old got this morning though. This isn't all from one day. What do I even have in here? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. This is, she said she got the day before her birthday. So three days ago, but you know, better than nothing. But I'm gonna save those. Those are gold and I need, I need a lot of eggs. I do have some more baby chicks that are coming, so that'll be good. I like to start a new flock every year and get our numbers up. We are down quite a bit. We also, we butchered a lot this fall, meat birds and such, but I need to get my layers, my laying hens back up in numbers. And of course, the new ones that I'm starting this winter will not be laying until this summer, but it'll be good to get them going. So I'm hoping that by the end of summer, we're really back in the chicken business as far as eggs go. And I've never had enough eggs. I've had up to 50 to 75 laying hens before. I've never really had enough to preserve. But this year, I'm going to purposely preserve eggs for the winter. Now my chickens always, I know there's all kinds of chicken controversies going on right now. My chickens always stop laying where I live in Virginia in the winter for about eight weeks or so. And then they pick back up and it'll just be a few eggs and then it'll get going. And then we'll be getting lots of eggs every day. Um, I've never put a heat light in my coop. I've always, I had always heard it was good for them to have a break, to not always be in production. I don't know, that's just what I've heard. I've been doing chickens for about 15 years and I only know, you know, my, my backyard way to do it. Uh, but anyway, but I've talked to people who do a light and they get eggs year round and they've had no problems and they've got healthy birds and all that. I've just always taken a break for the winter and that's okay. Uh, usually it's okay, but then of course this winter we've had 19 to 32 dollar boxes of gold eggs, and that's quite different. Um, so anyway, I do have a decent flock now, but I am going to add, I believe I've got 38 chicks ordered. I do a lot of the buffs. I've always done a lot of barred rocks, Rhode Island reds, just very hardy birds. We have some more Easter eggers and olive eggers coming because it's always fun to get the color variety in the eggs. We hatched a bunch of eggs last year. We have, we did a phenomenal job of hatching a whole bunch of roosters. I've got about eight roosters right now. They're beautiful and I don't mind having a lot of roosters as long as everybody's playing nice, okay? As long as the hens aren't getting attacked and uh, the, the roosters are fine with the kids and all of that. I mean, I don't mind butchering them if we need to. In fact, the very first chicken butchering I ever did, tell the story with me, was when I was barefoot and pregnant with Leah, who is now 12, and I had three mean roosters, and I wanted to learn how to butcher, and I butchered, I Googled my way through it, I butchered those roosters, I did it. I am pregnant mama, hear me roar, is basically what I was saying. But with these eight roosters that I currently have, I have two in with my hens now, and they're fine. You know, sometimes it's too much of a dominance thing and they'll fight each other, uh, or they attack the hens or whatever, but that seems to be going well. And then I have the other six in the barnyard area, and they're doing fine. So anyway, as long as everybody's happy, I'm happy, says every mom in the universe, right? How many eggs is that? Do we even know? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 15, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Pretty close there. Um, I will also feed my chickens back the eggshells, even the store-bought eggshells. I don't roast them first. We do usually just break them up. And I've never had my chickens become egg eaters. Now that that is the concern there. People will bake them so that there's not any of the raw egg on them. And 
some folks that helps them from their chickens not becoming egg eaters. For me, I'm always about doing things as simply as possible. So I will just crush up these eggs in a bowl and we'll mix it with whatever other scraps we have for them. It helps them replenish their calcium. There's other natural ways you can do that as well, adding oyster shell and such. But anywho, that's my little chicken chat for this moment. Here. Alrighty, and so now I'm going to add in my four cups of milk. We're going to do two teaspoons of salt. Of course, you can adjust this any direction you need to for your family. Do a teaspoon of pepper. And we will do a teaspoon of onion powder. And we're going to pour this egg mixture over our sausage and cheese. And so with the 32 eggs, just to help it break down more for us, it's about eight eggs per nine by 13 casserole here. But I am, of course, eyeballing this. Now, I don't think my little five foot four legs will allow me to stretch all the way back here, so I'm gonna move my pans around. And again, besides putting the tater tots on top, I'm going to freeze these just like, just like this. with our tater tots and we can do it you know really nice and proper and make little rows um, but that's not who I am I'm not I'm just I just can't I can't do it so <laughs> because I want to do these meals and get it all done so we'll move them around here yes we will but it will be willy-nilly because that is who I am and I am okay with that. You can let me know if you're a willy-nilly tater tot kind of mom or if you're a nice and perfect rose kind of mom because all of us can be friends and it's all gonna bake up beautifully. Will not, will not affect the end result going in our mouth. Okay, so again, for some of you, I know some of my friends, this is gonna burn. And then also, I love assembly lines here, so we'll dump the tater tots and then we'll fix them up a bit. And here we go. Now we're gonna get these wrapped up. So these are our four 
tater tot sausage breakfast casseroles. These will be amazing to have in my freezer for my family for the coming weeks. Good job us. Let's move on now to the next recipe. Alrighty, so I'm going to get these onions sauteed for our next four nine by 13 breakfast. Trying to remember today to actually move my anti-fatigue mats out. I know several of you told me at this new kitchen to get these and I got them last summer. Sometimes I find myself when I'm cooking if this is pushed all the way up against the stove, not actually standing on it. So I will be standing on these today. Yes, I will. All right, so I have everything prepped now and out here in front of us to work on these four nine by 13 hearty breakfast casseroles. Lots of bacon involved. Let's take a look. So we have our 24 eggs in a bowl. I actually had my 12 year old came in to check in. He's working on a project at the other end of the house and I was chopping the bacon. He asked if he could help. I was like, sure, go ahead and crack two dozen eggs for your mama. So thank you. We got those in the bowl already. We have our sauteed onions. This is my last box of the organic hash browns from Azure. It's a five pound box and you saw these, uh, these potatoes were frozen solid. So I slammed them on the floor a bit. They didn't bust. I mean, you know, we always like to tempt fate in our adventures, but that worked out pretty well. We have the Swiss cheese that my 12 year old grated for us yesterday for this recipe. And then we have some cheddar cheese, of course, salt and pepper. This recipe, I do use some small curd cottage cheese. We're gonna mix that in with the eggs. And then this is actually more bacon than this recipe needs, but I have that chopped up now. And what's left is gonna go in another recipe coming up. And also here's the breakfast tater tot casseroles that are all labeled and wrapped up and ready to go. And I'm going to have somebody carry these down to the basement and get them in the freezer while I get going on our next meal. crushing those eggs for me. Gonna get those out. Get some other scraps for our chickens. Very first thing we need to do in this recipe is do a layer of the potatoes on the bottom. And I used another box of these potatoes to do a big breakfast scramble the other week. It was really good. And I mean, it was like two servings of leftovers, so. take these clumps out. I also have one of my teens working on chopping down that winter squash and we'll get that going in the freeze dryer. So if you hear the chopping sounds in the background, that's all of that hard work.
We have, I did some big bulk French toast a few days ago. Actually my 12 year old and I did it. And so um, we have that and we'll have a little bit of leftover bacon for breakfast tomorrow. And I might do these last little bit of potatoes too. Divide the hash browns between the four casserole dishes. Lay your bacon, cheddar cheese, and Swiss cheese over the potatoes. In a large mixing bowl, beat the eggs and cottage cheese. We did that. Adding salt and pepper, gotta do that. Uh, and then pour evenly over the casserole. So, we did not mind cooking up all this bacon yesterday. I think we actually did, we did a couple pounds more. We might have done 15 pounds and the pack called for 12. I'd have to go flip through and look at the beginning first. But anyway, we, we did not mind having some extra bacon around here. And actually our John Henry General Store has had a fantastic deal on bacon. It actually like totally stopped up. <laughs> you couldn't get in their parking lot. I sent Travis to get some too. We couldn't even get it. It was uh, 10 pounds of a really good particular brand. I think for $37. No, I feel like that's wrong. I'm gonna have to tell you. I'll have to look, look on my phone to tell you what it was. But it was a good price and people were coming from all over. And like I said, you could not even get in their parking lot. I sent Travis, he could not get any. <laughs> so anyway, it's just nice to have some good bacon. All right, I couldn't stand it, I checked. So yes, the bacon, it was 10 pounds for $37. People went wild about it. We couldn't even get any, but it was a really popular local thing. Cheddar cheese and Swiss cheese. So I'm gonna keep going with these. And it's eight cups of cheddar cheese total, so I'm doing two in each pan. Anytime you're cooking up any of my big batch freezer meals, it's divided down by the number of meals each recipe makes. So total in this large family freezer meals guide 17 for the 40 breakfast. It's 10 recipes that we get about four breakfasts each out of. And then for the dinner, the slow cooker freezer meals, we're gonna also, we also think we're gonna get done today with those, and this is the Swiss cheese here that we shredded at home, with those, it's 10 recipes. And you get about three of the one gallon Ziploc freezer bags. You get about three per recipe. Sorry, it's a little clumpy, but it'll all melt down and work out in the end. And also with this recipe, you can, and this is the picture shown in the freezer cooking guide, you can add some bacon to the top of it if you'd like. Just going over these again. In my clumpy areas here. I totally forgot to sprinkle my sauteed onions over the peppers, so we will be doing this over the cheese. I won't tell if you won't. That's just the direction of the freezer cooking guide that I give you. Happy report, just got two more eggs from the chicken coop, so those must be fresh from today. It's good. So here's how our four nine by 13 pans are looking so far. Now we're gonna pour our egg and cottage cheese mixture over the top and let that soak on down through to the bottom. Okay, so I'm actually gonna jump ahead in my big batch freezer cooking guide here to page 19 because it's another recipe that requires 36 eggs in the bowl. And my 12 year old is working on cracking the eggs for me here and my 16 year old is working on wrapping those breakfast casseroles we just finished and labeling those. So again, big team effort here. With this particular recipe, it's the sausage and apples English muffin bake. It's going to be very yummy. So we're gonna start by laying out our English muffins in these pans. Alrighty, so 
I'm going to line the bottom of each of these pans with our English muffins facing up. And this is a good overnight breakfast casserole as well if you want to prep it the night before and then set it in your refrigerator and put it in your oven the next morning. I'm gonna cut a couple to go in our little side here. I have one of my sons popping the tops on those two jars of sausage and he's gonna drain those for me. And that will be good. All right, so I have our already cooked and canned sausage and I'm just gonna layer this over the English muffins. And it's four pounds of ground beef total, divided amongst each pan. And now we have our 12 apples that my daughter prepped yesterday. The recipe calls for provolone. I have Swiss, I think it'll all work out in the end. So now I'm pouring in the half and half with the 36 eggs. Also, my son is gonna bring me over a cup of maple syrup in a moment, but we'll get started mixing this. get these four yummy freezer meals all wrapped up. And here's our last four of the hearty breakfast casserole that are all wrapped up for us, ready to go to the freezer. So we finished 12 super mega massive freezer meals. I have sat down here, I just been, basically been having a little lunch break, just ate my lunch, having a hot beverage, and because this is my idea of a good time, I know we have our guide pack for all this freezer cooking. I still like my whiteboard, still get a thrill out of crossing things off and giving myself check marks, just helps me feel, <laughs> visualize the accomplishment. So I wrote down all of the 40 big batch freezer meals for breakfast that we are doing for my family of 11. We've got the tater tot and sausage breakfast casserole. But let's cross these off and get our check marks right now. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, that's a timer going off or something. Please, please stop timer. Okay, that, they made mama get up. That was a timer the kids had set. The tater tot sausage breakfast casseroles, we did four, nine by 13s. I'm going to check that and I'm gonna draw a line through it because it is done and that brings me happiness. Okay, the hearty breakfast casseroles, check mark, line through it. We did four, nine by 13s and then I went ahead and I came down and did the sausage and apples, English muffin bakes, check mark. Four, nine by 13s, yes. So now it's like so close yet so far. We're gonna, at this point, I just keep it fun, <laughs> fun and interesting for myself. So I think the next thing, just because it'll be an easy win for me on this big, super mega massive freezer cooking day, I think I'm gonna do the breakfast casserole bowls. You'll like that a lot. Very good, quick mama breakfast option. Also, I have several kids that love it whenever we have these, and, and you'll see how we do it. But I think we're gonna do these next and go from there. Alrighty, so we are back at it. We're just rolling through this, aren't we? So I have all of these little little containers that are also freezer safe, microwave safe, all those good things. You can also do this quick prep that we're gonna do for these meals right now. You can do them in Ziploc bags. You can dump these ingredients then in a mug and then add your eggs in and microwave them from there. Or you can use little containers like this. Now, not only are these convenient for quick, like I'm thinking, mama meals, right? These also coincidentally happen to be low carb and they also count as a trim healthy mama S meal. They would be THM friendly, not approved by THM, but I'm just telling you by the ingredients, right? We're gonna have cheese in them, peppers and some ham. And that's all that we're prepping. Whether we're gonna use the little baggies or the little containers, they're gonna go in the freezer. And then when I need them, 
when we need them, I've got a couple kids excited about them, you just pull it out. You crack two eggs in it, put it in the microwave for about a minute or so, microwave times may vary, pull it back out, give it a stir, put it back in the microwave for up to another minute, and breakfast should be ready to go. So all I have to do on that morning, because I don't know, kids having French toast, kids doing something else, I'm trying to stay on my little plan. All I have to do is crack two eggs in this, put it in the microwave. I do a lot of the poached eggs in the microwave for myself. I'll do that two or three times a week. So anyway, let's do this little prep now. And so here we go, and there's a picture of some of the bowls, an example of what it looks like after it is cooked. So we have our ham, bell peppers, and cheese. Now you can also meal prep however many of these that you would like and put them in your refrigerator for a few days and they're ready to go, or do a bunch and put them in your freezer. Not only are these good for big family meal options, but also, now this timer, this timer's interrupting us. This is actually, I put, oh, come on, off. Thank you, I can hit the timer off button, okay. Now, clear, because I actually turned my microwave on. Amelia and I were joking, hey, look, we meal prepped. I put a big baked macaroni from Thanksgiving, right? Because we made extra on Thanksgiving, and Amelia, she's got it. She's like, we meal prepped. I said, yes, we did. So we have that in the oven. I almost said microwave for lunch. I pulled the foil off about five minutes ago. Check that, it shouldn't look. Can you open it for me? Yep, good deal, okay. so. I'm gonna go ahead, I need to pull that out also, but I wanted to let it sit for like five minutes without the foil for the cheese to finish melting on the top, but the internal temperature was perfect. So that's gonna be added to lunch and dinner options for today and probably into tomorrow. Also, these little convenient prepped and ready to go breakfast packs that we're gonna make, which again, like I say, you can dump them into a breakfast mug. Uh, this is what I was saying before my macaroni interrupted me, the things that interrupt us around here. Also, I have viewers who tell me that they use my meal preps and freezer meals and recipes for, they may have a lot of medical appointments, may have a lot going on with their kids or their families or loved ones. So just helpful for all family size. If you're a busy human, these can help you. Plus, you can also mix and match your ingredients. You could do mushrooms in them. There's a lot of things you could throw in there. And so here we go, a nice hot and bubbly baked macaroni from Thanksgiving prep all the way here to mid-February. And also, Amelia just said that these little bowls are like little prepped and ready to go omelets, which is very true. Okay, so we did it. So we have 30 of these meal prepped omelet breakfast bowls ready to go. These are gonna go in the freezer. And again, anyone in my family can grab and go this as a breakfast option. And I will be grabbing and going <laughs> with this breakfast option quite a bit, yay. Teen helper sweeping the kitchen for us, so that is nice. And we got 30 bowls and we're gonna get a good check mark for that. So I'm just taking a few minutes here to do a quick wipe down and clean up from what, from the mess those little omelet bowls made. Just got some cheese around. We did a clean up during lunch break. Oh, let me just stretch. Okay. Okay, so next up is gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna love this one. It's the sheet pan bacon and egg breakfast sandwiches. So we are doing pancakes on the sheet pan. We have an egg mixture that we're gonna do plus the bacon. We're gonna put them together as individual sandwiches and then wrap them up and they'll be ready to go in the freezer. And future Jay Morrell is already thanking present Jay Morrell. We will be thanking past Jay Morrell. I will thank myself for getting this done in April, 
whenever I whip them out before homeschool group. And that's what we have for breakfast in the morning. So here's exactly what we're making for the single recipe, but of course we need the top and bottom of the pancake, of the pancake sides. It calls for two 17 by 11 baking sheets. That will make about 24 sandwiches. We are doing the double recipe. We'll be doing four baking sheets and that will make about 48 sandwiches. Here's what they look like when they're all layered together, but I'm going to individually wrap them as well. So it's a little bit more labor intensive, but we're gonna balance it out. So again, probably for my mama brain, we have these sausage, egg, and cheese bagels that we can do, and also these sausage and egg pizza bagels that are individually wrapped as well. So we'll do one of those once we're done with this sheet pan pancake sandwich. Good deal that we're doing now. Also, priorities, let's see if my camera will show this. We talk about fingernails on here sometimes. See how that, I got that paint chipping. And here, it's real sad. I just had my nails done last week, and I usually have gel done. So whatever this gel, gel was last time that I had done has not held up to my lifestyle. Liam on the, I feel like we're doing a band, right? Liam on the drums, we got Liam chopping up some more bacon for us. And then my 16 year old is still working away on the butternut squash, but she has also, wrapped meals for me and helped get them in the freezer. So we need 12 cups of pancake mix, 12 eggs, six cups of milk. So hmm, I don't, I'm looking I'm looking at my basket of eggs. Did I tell you that we after those eggs were collected this morning, one of the kids came in later and had two more and I was like, good job, good job chickens. Okay, so we'll just get this going. And now I am just using some regular old pancake mix that I had in my pantry. You can do the frugal from scratch pancake mix. So I'll post the links in the description below if you would like those options as well. But anyway, you wanna do your sheet pan pancakes. By this point, I have lost count. Okay, <laughs> I, keep, I think I keep saying nine over and over in my head. So, it's gonna be okay though. built some sheet pan eggs earlier and then I actually, oh, 
well, I have to have my fan on. If you can hear me, I remade the eggs because when we put them in, they were crooked and I had to spin them around and some spilled. Anyway, the eggs, I just threw some baking soda in there because we had flames and here we go. So now I need to clean all that. Good thing we have more than one oven. And I feel like I should say, because I didn't get much of our, our oven fire on video because we were dealing with it, it wasn't really the oven that caught on fire, it was the egg mixture that spilled onto the bottom of the oven. So, that is taken care of. <laughs> I also been serving out some of these sheet pan pancake sandwiches. The one I made for my adult son was massive. Of course, we like things massive, but I'm actually going to cut all the other ones in half. And with, I had a few younger kids too who wanted sheet pan pancake with butter and syrup, like just to eat. So, now that is done. If I cut all these, I mean, cause we're talking like si size of my head here. Like these are massive, okay? And they're nice and thick and all of that. So I'm going to cut them in half. Once I put the sheet pan, egg, bacon, and cheese on them, and we will get 40 of these. I'm gonna get down to this uh, sheet pan pancake sandwich assembly line. But my adult son who just got home from work wanted these so I made it for him and now we will get maybe the rest in the freezer. Okay, wait a minute. We're losing another giant pancake sandwich. That means they're good. Okay, so even after all the extra sheet pan pancake adventures, they were very popular. We love them. We still are getting 41, not 48, but 41 of these sheet pan pancake sandwiches. And I'll show you. I mean, let's see if I can pick one up here. They're just all kinds of goodness there. Sorry, it's Hard to hold the camera and do this, but we're gonna individually wrap them and then put them in the gallon bags. We'll put this one back together here. I'm so sorry, eggs. I have some extra egg too, since we had some egg adventures. We put on that one. There you go. And then we also have all of this cut up winter squash. So we're gonna get these spread out on our freeze dried trays. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in the freezer for tonight, cause I'm not even going downstairs to turn on the freeze dryer, uh, but that'll be fine. We'll probably start running these tomorrow. Once they bake and cool, we're gonna cut these in squares, similar to our pancake sandwiches over there. We won't wrap them so much with foil and plastic wrap, but we'll at least wrap the individual slices in parchment paper, and then we'll stick those in some gallon freezer bags as well. So these can end up as single serving pancakes that can be heated up in the microwave, but are oh so delicious with the strawberries and the buttermilk and all that good stuff. No, wait, I totally forgot the topping. Pulling them back out now. Okay, so here are all the individually wrapped pancake sandwiches, and we're gonna load these now into these gallon bags. Yes, I do reuse my gallon bags, especially for projects like this, that we're gonna have individually wrapped bags in, but we will label these and 
get a sensible amount. I like sensible amounts of pancake sandwiches into each bag. All right, so for our topping, I gotta make some topping room here. I'm just happy-go-lucky getting these in the oven. Okay, so it's two cups of flour, a third of a cup of sugar, not a third, three-fourths, and then the same for the brown sugar. And get ready, there's about to be a lot of butter involved. I just had a teen run downstairs to grab me the cinnamon also because they couldn't locate one up here. It's possible we could be out upstairs, so I'm gonna add that to our mix as well. And so with the butter, hold, hold on to your hats, friends. It'll be six sticks of butter total. We're going to slice them down into nice, big, thick pats. So we will cover the top of our strawberry buttermilk pancake bakes with our mix here and then put the pats of butter on top and then bake it. Okay, friends. I just looked up and my camera wasn't, it was totally black. So hopefully you saw me with the topping on these strawberry buttermilk pancake cakes. And now we are just doing lots of butter all over the top of each one. Don't worry, don't eat this all day, every day. So this is definitely classified as dessert for breakfast fun. So here's all the different breakfast sandwiches that are being wrapped now, and then they are gonna go into, be grouped together in gallon freezer bags as well. And so, whiteboard check-in. Let's just take it from the top. Tater tot sausage breakfast casseroles, check. The hearty breakfast casseroles, check. Sheet pan, bacon and eggs, pancakes, sandwiches. We, we 40 made it in the freezer, that was amazing. Strawberry, buttermilk, pancake casseroles. I just checked on those in the oven. I just set my timer for 10 more minutes. It, they, it smells amazing in here. Um, the breakfast omelet casserole bowls, we did 30 of those. The sausage and apple English muffin bakes, and then the sausage, egg, and cheese bagels, which are these right here. And then I made, just made these extra breakfast bagels with some of the bacon, egg, and cheese squares that I had left. So those are kind of a bonus, yay. Um, so now that my strawberry buttermilk pancake bakes are getting ready to come out of the oven, I need the oven again for the banana bread breakfast cookies and then for the peanut butter chocolate chip oatmeal bars. And then I'll get these in the oven, at least one of them. <laughs> I might get one in the oven, get the other prepped and ready to go in the oven. Um, and then I have everything ready to assemble these pizza bagels too. And we'll be wrapping up the 40 big batch freezer meal portion of the evening and rolling into the 30 slow cooker freezer meals because we're doing it. Alrighty, so while our strawberry buttermilk pancake bakes finish up, we are going to assemble and get ready these banana bread breakfast cookies. And here's a wrapped breakfast sandwich update.
So here are my collection of items that I need to pull off these banana bread breakfast cookies. And this is actually the mashed banana that was prepped yesterday. So now we're gonna start throwing things together. Okay, so out of the four cups of oats here, I'm gonna put two, you can put them through like a Vitamix or a food processor. I'm going to come, come hither Vitamix. I'm gonna just put them through my Vitamix. Okay, so in our bigger bowl here, we're gonna add in our two cups of oat flour that we just made. <clears throat> and then we're gonna do the two cups of whole oats. We'll look at my little list. Two teaspoons of baking soda. of cinnamon, nut, and then a teaspoon of nutmeg, teaspoon of salt. And then we need one cup of milled flax, which I just got some more of the other day. This is just the Walmart brand. I'm sure Bob's Red Mill has some. You can also get your flax in seed form and grind it down yourself. Okay. And also throw some on the counter. Okay. Okay, so there's all those ingredients. If I don't have it, that's okay. Can't find the nutmeg right now, so we're gonna be we're gonna leave that out. Okay, next bowl. So here's, as an example, whenever I have these big things stored out of oats or what have you, um, this is just one recipe and it's almost halfway empty. So we do run through them quickly.
So here are our four pans of the peanut butter chocolate chip oatmeal bars. Now I'm doing these in nine by 13 pans. So these are going to make for thicker bars. If you would like thinner bars, you can just press out this mix in a bigger pan. Um, yeah, wider pan, all of that. So I'm gonna get these in the oven now. They only need to be in there for about 25 minutes or so. Then they need to cool for about 10 to 15 minutes. After that, we will pull them out via this parchment paper and cut them into bars and we can work to get them ready, get them freezer ready from there. is our friend. We got everything done on Saturday that is crossed off on this board. And it's not 70 freezer meals, but that's okay. It's, I think 36, it's a lot. Uh, we, let's, let's start with the highlights. Tater tot casserole, hearty breakfast casseroles, sheet pan, bacon and egg pancake sandwiches that I had to like hurry and get those in the freezer or they were gonna be gone. <laughs> uh, blueberry, strawberry, buttermilk pancake casseroles, banana bread breakfast cookies, and even those were loved. Okay, the breakfast casserole bowls. Let me get my tea, it will hold me and encourage me this morning. Um, yeah, those 30 breakfast casserole omelet bowls. Peanut butter, chocolate chip, oatmeal bars. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are delicious. That's what I was just eating one of. Yes. And then the sausage and apples, English muffin bakes, the sausage, egg, and cheese bagels. So all we have left are the sausage and egg pizza bagels. It's now Monday. Okay, it's Monday afternoon. So you'll be proud of me, and oh yes, this, this tea is nice and warm. You'll be proud of me as Saturday evening progressed around the time those spilled eggs caught on fire in the bottom of the oven, and we stopped for a bit to handle that. I just started to sit down and take several rests and rest my back and rest my neck, continue to work on different recipes. It's like a little play-by-play -play of what was happening behind the scenes. Continue to work through different recipes, but I just started to take longer breaks in between each one. And then it got to closer and closer to bedtime and I had some family members who looked like me who needed their mama. And I'm like, you know what? We did 36, go us. We didn't catch the house on fire, go us. I didn't sprain my back or my neck, go us. We did things, but definitely not the 70 freezer meals in one day, that I that that early morning coffee it told me coffee will lie to you sometimes a good night's sleep and coffee those two together I you want me to plow plow a garden <laughs> I'll do it for you right so those earlier in the day thoughts and inspirations morning jamarel is you know sometimes a little different than evening jamarel 
So, mm -hmm. I got this cup at the stockyards that you all told me to go to when Travis and I went last summer. I had a business trip that we turned into our 24th, 24th anniversary trip. We went to the stockyards and I got this cup, the Stockyards Fort Worth, Texas. And then Sunday we had an ice storm, roads were a mess and all of that. So we just took all day to rest at home. We watched in the evening, a bunch of our younger children had never seen Titanic. And of course, you know, there's a few parts you gotta fast forward through. Overall excellent movie, we watched that. I stayed in my pajamas all day. It was a nice relaxing day. So happy Monday afternoon now. I have one more recipe which is the sausage and egg pizza bagels. We're going to do those now. I am actually going to go ahead and bake them just to help get the cheese melted and such on the top. But these can be reheated for individual breakfast or big family breakfast and you can do them in the microwave to warm them or you can even put them to reheat them in the oven at that time. That's the last thing we have to do for the breakfast meals. And we are for real doing our 30 easy freezer meals in one afternoon and now it will truly be one afternoon. We have again all the veggies prepped for that, all the meat is prepped for that. I have other condiments out on this table and we'll get going with those. So. By the end of today, we will have our 70 freezer meals, yay. So here's what we're working on to finish up all the breakfast freezer meals, these sausage and egg pizza bagels. And the eggs were prepped the other day, and this is sausage from a jar of my canned sausage. Here are, here are also all of those peanut butter oatmeal bars. Now, we did get into these on Saturday. Oh, yes, we did. But here on Monday, we got the rest of them chopped up, and these will be just perfect in the freezer. But I will warn you, they are absolutely delicious. So, <laughs> yes, okay, that's all I can say about that. Warning, warning, absolutely delicious, mm-hmm. Here is our stack of the sausage and egg pizza bagels for some quick kid-friendly breakfast coming up. All right, so we can give ourselves two check marks for finishing, draw a line through this. So the 40 big batch freezer meals, those are complete. I will be showing you all of the meals together at one time here coming up in this video. Okay, so now we are on to the easy 30 freezer meals in one afternoon, part of our undertaking here. Now again, please note that a bunch of this prep work was done on Friday afternoon. It is now Monday afternoon, so it's perfect timing. We are going to assemble these meals, so here we go. And so here's the 30 slow cooker freezer meals in one afternoon guide pack five that I am using. Because I like my whiteboard, I also wrote down all of the meals we're doing right now. Here in the table of contents, all the meals are listed. As an option, there's the shopping list for all 10 recipes. It can also be broken down to just tackle the first five recipes or the last five recipes. So either of these two would give about 15 meals each or doing all 10 recipes at one time gives 30. And here's the big batch freezer meal prep guide that we did on Friday. 
here's the shopping list for all 10 recipes. Here's the shopping list for the first five. And then here's just the shopping list for the last five, if folks would like to pick and choose however it works for them. The very first meal we're assembling is the slow cooker Tuscan pork stew. This meal has several ingredients we'll include in today's gallon freezer bags, and then it has some ingredients that will just be set aside for cooking day. Also on cooking day, I'll need to cook some pasta and have that ready for this meal. So on cooking day, I will add in diced tomatoes and chicken broth. So here are our three packs of the peanut sauce. And all I'm going to do is place them inside these other large baggies that hold our chicken. And our little system has been, I have a helper take this down, put this in on my refrigerator for the moment. We're gonna, we're, 
behind the scenes, hey, how does all this work? We're gonna get these in the freezer, but I need to do a big thumbnail picture with them. So for now, we're just putting these back in the refrigerator, and then my happy helper is bringing me up the next meat we're working with, and that's because, you know, the meat's down in the basement and I'm up here and keeping the meat in the refrigerator until I'm ready to work with it and all that jazz. Okay, here you go, happy helper. <laughs> delicious served over steamed rice we usually do these along with steamed brown rice and also and also on cooking day we will be sure to the extra thing we have to add in is the bag of the stir-fried vegetables in about the last 30 minutes or so for this meal I don't know in all my years of freezer cooking has this ever happened to me I know I've spilled some stuff I think we've come close many times I don't think this has happened you tell me <laughs> but I was going over to open my cans of green chilies and uh, yeah yeah good stuff good stuff right here in the mega mama kitchen so I stepped away to get a towel, and it's just, uh, the fun continues, but we're gonna pull it together here. Let me save my last bag.
actually sit for a little break while my towels sop up some of this and, and eat one of those delicious peanut butter chocolate chip bars and think happy thoughts. And then we'll come back. So look at this friends, I am giving us check marks. We are crossing off recipes. 
we accomplished a lot. And for that pumpkin turkey chili, I get 100 check marks. Yes, I do. We crossed that out. We conquered that mess. And I was still able to salvage some for the freezer. Now, there were two recipes. I just honestly ran out of chicken for. I was trying to use up chicken breast I had in my freezer for these slow cooker freezer meals. And the other chicken I have is like, you know, whole chicken. <laughs> so two meals I ran out of chicken for. Wasn't going to process anything else up, but we did 64 meals total. We got about 40 out of our breakfast freezer meals and then 24 total with our slow cooker freezer meals. We also got a smiley face. I am proud of us. We handled the unexpected. We handled exploding pumpkin. We did all the things in this massive the moment of truth here with this freezer I took some time and I pulled uh, I, of course we added the breakfast freezer meals and the slow cooker freezer meals to this freezer but also if you notice the very first shelf and the second shelf from the top. Those are dinner freezer meals that I had already in another freezer so I put them in here in this freezer and I just made one big freezer meal freezer yet again. You know I used to have two or three freezer meal freezers and now I have another freezer loaded with freezer meals and in this basket here that I'm showing you I'm showing you all the different little like those that are the wonderful strawberry buttermilk pancakes there and all of our bagel sandwiches here are other breakfast meals wrapped up and there's our slow cooker freezer meals and then up this shelf there are two slow cooker freezer meals on the side but besides that those are some pan dinners I still have left from our freezer cooking in November that we're still working through. And there's all those little breakfast tubs that I made for those little quick omelet microwave meals. And that is a bag of pureed pumpkin from 2021 and a bag of THM uh, trim train soup from January that I also wanted to be sure that I used up. So I just dedicated this freezer back to freezer meals. I would love to go back to having a breakfast freezer meal freezer and a dedicated dinner freezer meal freezer and hey let's even have like a snack and lunch freezer right <laughs> so thank you for doing all of this major freezer cooking with me I appreciate you hanging out and just working through the ups and the downs and the spills and all the fun adventures we have had in this freezer cooking thank you so much for watching I appreciate you and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video bye bye